Hey everyone, Michael Short here. Come on, let's go outdoors. Well, welcome to the Hazama area. We're up in the northwest corner of Alberta and it's home to the wood bison, which are a threatened species. Talk more about this. I'm joined by Lyle Fullerton. He is a special projects coordinator That's with right. Alberta Environment and Protected Areas. That's Lyle, right. let's let's talk first of all about how many bison roughly would be in this area? We have uh, currently in the Hazama range probably over 525 bison here now. Yep. And it started from a population of what? Yeah, very small, a couple of dozen back in 1983 when the program was first launched with uh, the Canadian Wildlife Service, Fish and Wildlife, and the Dene Taw First Nation. And of course, this was all uh, in an effort to bring bison. This is in going back many, many, many years. Um, this was traditional roaming area for the bison. Historically, yeah, wood bison were here and, uh, and they were extirpated. And then uh, a recovery plan, national recovery plan called for uh, free roaming populations in here, uh, Alberta, Northwest Territories, Yukon and British Columbia. And so that's how that herd uh, began here in the Hazama. Well, speaking of Hazama, give us a sense of just how large this area, because it's my understanding the bison need a lot of room to, to roam. <laughs> well, they certainly have a lot of room to roam up here. This is really big, really big country. And uh, you could almost, you know, quite easily put a European country like Belgium in this Hazama range. Well, I guess with that in mind, uh, we should get in the vehicle and start doing Got some traveling. To cover. <laughs> We're, we are going to spend the next couple of days up here, folks, and we going to be traveling and talking with Lyle about some of the challenges that wood bison are facing up here in the northwest corner of Alberta. As you can tell, deep snow is certainly no barrier for the wood bison to get onto these uh, roads, and that's where the issues come in. Motor vehicle collisions with bison are always uh, a concern, especially when you have a situation like this. One accident, we kill a couple of bison, and uh, obviously it wrecks a vehicle, but it, it puts uh, drivers at risk as well. So we certainly want the traveling public to slow down in, in these by, on these roads where there are bison. Well, we talked earlier about the size of the wood bison area, but uh, you may not know that uh, this area is broken down into several ranges. And Lyle, I guess that's, uh, that's kind of key in, in terms of a management approach. So yes. why don't you walk us through the different uh, areas that the bison are located sure. in? Sure, you bet, Michael. The, the Ethiathan Lake Range, which are animals that came out of British Columbia in Alberta, uh, kind of follows uh, uh, in an area like this, uh, all the way from sort of the Chinchaga Wildland Provincial Park area south of Rain Rainbow Lake. The Hazama herd that we've been uh, looking at over the last few days has a range uh, something that would approximate this coming down the west side of the Hazama complex and then uh, back up like that. The uh, Wabasca range is actually right in about the center of Wildlife Management Unit 540, uh, probably something like this, although all of Wildlife Management Unit 540, almost entirely, not entirely, but almost entirely, is now a Wabasca Bison Protection Area. The Wenzel Lake, uh, or Wenzel population, is actually a shared population with Wood Buffalo National Park, and animals often come out of the park, and that range would approximate something like this, uh, north of Wenzel Lake, uh, and then, of course, animals moving in and out of the park. There's probably less than a dozen animals here in 540 in the Wenzel population. In this population, uh, or in the Wabasco, pardon me, in the Wenzel population, there's probably anywhere from 100 to 200 animals annually, just depending on migration in and out of the park. How important is it for the animals to stay within the boundaries? Obviously, bison move, and um, does that cause concern when they move out, out of a particular area? Yeah, for sure. It's it's actually a, a, a 
very large issue with bison management. The, the Wenzel population or Wood Buffalo National Park population of bison are classified as diseased with brucellosis uh, and tuberculosis. This population here in Wabasca is, we've tested and is disease free, uh, as is Ethithin, as is the Hazama population. So, uh, this diseased population, obviously we do not want coming into contact with non-diseased bison. As part of the disease control effort, the public are being asked to report any bison from this point east to the highway. The reason for that, Michael, is we want to keep these disease-free bison from crossing over Highway 35 into areas that may have diseased bison. So I would, I would suspect that just south of the crossing about, uh, to me it looks like three or four miles, there's some cut blocks, that would be, you know, the only real kind of habitat that's close by there, right? Uh, Well, we are in an Alberta Environment and Protected Areas lab here in high level where Lyle Fullerton is now collecting a bunch of samples that uh, have to be um, cataloged and uh, run through a machine so that the blood can be tested in a lab in Edmonton. This is all part of uh, the efforts that uh, the folks up here are going through to ensure that wood bison uh, remain disease free. Uh, we're here in the lab tonight. We're going to spin the blood, collect some serum, a few other samples, catalog everything and ensure that all of this gets to our, our lab in Edmonton where the actual uh, testing can be done. Obviously, having a herd of wild bison wandering through a community is not ideal. And in fact, they do pose a serious public safety concern. So we really don't want to have bison in communities. They, um, they can obviously be a, a real serious safety hazard for the public and, uh, and can in fact uh, do property damage to you know, buildings, rubbing on buildings and, and trees and things like that. So what we try and do is uh, negative condition them to being in communities here in Zama City and in the community of Chate. Um, we use a little gentle harassment to try and move them out of town and not make them, uh, or to make them uh, realize that uh, being in town is not comfortable. It doesn't always work here in Zama City because, you know, they, they're here 12 months of the year and they are, they're quite comfortable. But uh, we do use, uh, you know, pyrotechnic uh, uh, shots, uh, screamers and bangers, things like that, just to, just to encourage them not, not to be in town and to eliminate or to reduce that potential for, for a risk. So. There are certainly a couple of big issues uh, surrounding the wood bison up in this area, one of them being disease management and the other being conflict with both communities and motorists. So ultimately, what does the future look like when it comes to, I guess, a sustainable population of wood buffalo here in the uh, northwest part of Alberta?
Yeah, you bet. I'm really an enthusiastic and optimistic that we're going to have a good future for the Hazama bison population. We have de disease containment issues to deal with and we do have some of these conflicts, but I think that we can resolve those. Uh, I think that we can work with the Dene Ta First Nation and stakeholders in Alberta to ensure that we do have a sustainable uh, herd of wood bison here in the Hazama range. As you've seen, there are certainly some challenges facing wood bison up in this area, but with sound management decisions, I think the future, like today, is very bright for wood bison. Till next time, everyone, I'm Michael Short. Come on, let's go outdoors. Mm -hmm.